10 weeks ago, the streets of Kenya became a battleground. A war broke out between mobs loyal to opposition leader Rela Odinga and the armed forces answering to disputed President Mwai Kibaki. Uh, I think we're a bit naive as a government. We never thought that people within their own country could plan and execute the destruction and the killing of their own citizens. The trouble began soon after incumbent President Mwai Kibaki claimed victory in the election. I thank all of you for the trust you have bestowed upon me in renewing my mandate, which I accept with sincere gratitude and humility. Yet international monitors, including from the United States and the European Union, condemned the poll, saying there had been widespread vote tampering to tip the count in Kabaki's favor. The election was fair. We, as a Dr. Alfred Matua is the spokesperson for Kenya's president. We, as a government, have very big misgivings with the opposition and also with uh, the ECK, the Electoral Commission of Kenya, for the way they handled the announcement of the elections. We have no doubt that President Kibaki won these elections. Believing they'd been cheated, Odinga's supporters started the riots that quickly spiraled out of control leaving more than 1,000 people dead. The slaughter ran along tribal lines. Ethnic Kalenjins and Luos fighting against President Mwai Kibaki's tribe, the Kikuyu. We were saying that we had to be able to do it. We were saying that we had to be able to do it. We were I set out for Kenya's Rift Valley, the scene of the worst of the violence. I want to understand what has turned people on each other who have lived together for decades. I can only find one driver willing to brave the roads. He's a Maasai a tribe that hasn't taken part in the fighting. We find torch trucks and buses, which all belong to members of the president's tribe, the Kukui. The roads are being patrolled by politically aligned gangs. This one is called the Baghdad Boys, and they support opposition leader Rela Odinga. They're looking for Kukuyus passing through their territory. Many Kikuyus have been killed at checkpoints like this one. The Baghdad boys try to extort a few hundred shillings, three or four dollars, from every car that passes their improvised checkpoints. This money helps fund the violence. George Otieno proudly points out a large Kikuyu-owned hotel across the road that the boys have torched. No Rela, no peace, is their war cry, referring to opposition leader Rela Odinga. This area of the Rift Valley is an Odinga stronghold. 
Much of this land was taken from its tribal owners and handed over to politically connected Kikuyus after Kenya declared independence. Kikuyus make up only 20% of Kenya's population, but today they hold the lion's share of political and economic power. Opposition leader Odinga says it's power that the political elites don't want to relinquish. Uh, they're the ones who actually have brought this country to the brink of destruction by rigging elections. And, and they see that there's, that there's nothing wrong about that. I said myself for some time that uh, these people are thieves. Further west in the town of Kizumu, there's more damage. Kukuyu businesses looted and burned. But a gleaming Odinga campaign poster has survived the chaos. I go to the aptly named Crater Automobiles. This business was torched by its own employees, Odinga supporters who worked under Kikuyu bosses. James Akai was left to clean up the mess. Why? president. Amidst the rubble, I find Babu. He's just six years old. Babu is scavenging for scrap metal parts that weren't burnt by the fire. I ask how much he gets for the scrap. 30 out of 20. I'm going to get it. As I'm filming, the police arrive, and the kids vanish. Nearby at the Kazumu police station, there's a camp for refugees from the violence, one of hundreds of such camps around the country. Here I meet Veronica Adiembo, a 22-year-old who's still in shock from what she saw. She hasn't offered a word to anyone until now. For the next few days, I visit different camps for so-called IDPs, internally displaced people, refugees in their own country. The camps are divided along ethnic lines. These are Luos, the same tribe as Rela Odinga. Walikuta tu kwa nyumba, wakasema watu wajaluo ame, wataki hawa wajaluo. Sasa ndi wakanipiga, wakanivunya mkono, wakachoma viti yangu ya nyumba, kila kitu yote. More than 300,000 people have been displaced. The largest humanitarian crisis in Kenya's history. <laughs> the people in the camps are waiting till it's safe to leave their shelters and head to their tribal land. The Kukuyu moving east, the Luos west, dangerously dividing the country. But down the road in the town of Nakuru, I find that even within neighborhoods, the territory is being divided. 
After the election, these slums became a battlefield, and now they've been divided into zones. On my right are the Kalenjin and the Luos. On my left are the Kukuyus. These slums are a microcosm for what's happening all over Kenya. The slum zones have been renamed for the political parties, the PNU zone of government supporters and the opposition ODM zone. John Waweru, a Kukuyu, has had to leave his home in the ODM zone and is now carrying everything he owns across the line of control. Yani ilikuwa ni chuki sawa kwa ilikuwa mara moja sasa ikakuwa ni vita ya chuki mara moja watu baka wakasoma neno la siasa sasa ikakuwa ni chuki si ati ni siasa sana imeleta ju siasa ile saulika watu kaanza vita kawaida mlajaleta across the main road in the ODM zone Peter Miziku Aluo is just as disillusioned what happens here? These are burnt houses. This, this house belongs to... Uh, he shows me the uh, shells of burnt out uh, shacks and, and his disgust for the whole situation so the, is obvious. The, the, the from the, now the zone we are in here is opposition zone, the ODM zone. And the other one is the PNU zone, the government zone. So if you, if, if you, are, if you, are, not, you are not from the PNU, you cannot pass this way. If you are not from the ODM, you cannot pass the other side. And is that recent? Yeah, it has just started recently, a, a week ago. And who decided that? I don't know, I don't know who decided that, but we, we, we just saw people coming here with pangas attacking people here, cutting people, removing the heads and burning them. Uh, this is where I stay, this is my house, this is my bicycle. We always light, light a fire here in the... In the, in the Peter can't in the, sleep in his house for fear of being caught by arsonists. So he and his young family spend every night in the alley outside his door, ready to run away at a moment's notice. I've seen what I've, uh, I've never saw since I was born. Tribalism. So you'd never seen tribalism until now? I've never seen since I was born. And now you see tribalism? Now I'm, I'm seeing it happen. Since the crisis began, Rayla Odinga's party, the ODM, has always claimed that the violence was a spontaneous reaction to the rigged election. Uh, violence was never premeditated. It was uh, spontaneous, uh, countrywide. Uh, people just took to the streets uh, as a result of anger. Uh, no one could have planned this kind of violence. But as I travel around the country, a different picture is emerging. I'm told repeatedly that five minutes after the election result was declared, people looked out their windows and saw that the country was already alight. Lucy Wanjiko was chased off her land by opposition supporters, and her neighbors killed the night of the election announcement. Her account suggests that this was planned well in advance. <laughs> Tulisikia tu tuliona tu kadege kalipita hivi na kama nusu saa tukaona hao wameanza kukimbia na walipopigana na hawa watu walipigana kama masaa ma, maine ama matano hawa watu walikuwa wengi juu walikuwa wamemwaga nyumba fulani sasa walikuwa wanakula na kukunywa sasa hawa wazee wetu waki, hawa wakichoka wakale wanaenda break wengine fresh wanakuja Lucy claims to have been threatened even before the election, and that this is the third time that she's been chased off her land. It needs to be appreciated that there are some long standing grievances which have been there for a long time. The issue of land in the Rift Valley and the coast have been there. So you can say that the people took advantage of the election to also uh, uh, deal with other issues which have been outstanding for a long time. The New York-based Human Rights Watch doesn't buy that argument. 
It accuses Rela Odinga's ODM party of premeditated ethnic cleansing, a claim now echoed by the Kenyan government. The people who are going door to door killing others in this ethnic cleansing were organized youth, organized young people paid to do so, facilitated with vehicles and weapons to carry this out. Somebody made them do it or uh, organized them to do it. And they went to do it in the name of the opposition party, the Orange Democratic Movement, led by Honorable Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga denies this outright and instead claims that his people were only defending themselves after President Kabaki's security forces started gunning down political protesters. The government instructed the, the security forces to shoot to kill people. So many people lost their lives as a result of that. To help sift through the accusations that both parties are hurling at each other, I travel back to the capital, Nairobi, to seek out Eric Karede, spokesperson for Kenya's police force. Your intelligence has suggested for some time that political leadership in Kenya has supported the violence that's been going on in the last month. Well, some leaders, certainly some leaders. And if you look at the pattern of violence, it is not very hard to pick them out. There are areas where the violence was spontaneous and evidently spontaneous. There are areas where it was planned and there was evidence of planning. Nairobi's squalid slum of Kibera is one of the places where the rioting has been well organized. The fighting here has eased, but many people are quietly getting ready for the next round. This is Opete Opete, alias the General, seen here organizing protesters during the riots that burned large parts of Kibera to the ground. Natukifanya a demonstration to go kwa kifo tuko tayari kupigwa tuko tuko tayari ama hata kupigwa kupigana inaona kwa ile role ninayocheza pale nacheza kama kiongozi nime nimeongoza watu watu wangu kama saa nyingine nikitoka hapa katokera natoka na over 2000 people or 3000 people on the street sita kubali Rila Odinga denies that Opete helped coordinate any attacks against Kukuyus. But amidst the claims and the counterclaims, it's clear that both parties have fueled the post election violence. With the world watching, the two parties have entered into peace talks mediated by former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. The whole country is hanging on the outcome, but progress has been painfully slow. So far, Annan has convinced Odinga to drop a key demand, a rerun of the elections. So at the moment, our uh, concern is about the political solution to this um, crisis. We would like to have a transitional government that would facilitate power sharing. In the midst of the peace talks, Rila Odinga flies to the town of Karicho to pay his last respects to one of his party's politicians who was killed in the violence. I'm caught in a swell of 10,000 of Rayla's supporters. <laughs> These people have come here not just to mourn, but also to listen. Sisi tunasema tunataka kuunganisha makabila yote ya Kenya. Hata wakikuyu ni wa Kenya. Sasa 
Political rallies have been banned. So this is Rela Odinga's first public address since the crisis began. But his message today doesn't sound like one of peace and power sharing. No peace without justice. There can be no peace without justice. It's not just the opposition that's sounding belligerent. The government can barely hide its hatred of the opposition. The ODM leaders planned and executed, pre-planned and executed ethnic cleansing. These are people who are just as worse as Milosevic. They're just as worse as Idi Amin. They're using the same techniques that were used by Hitler. If the Anand talks don't succeed and a negotiated peace can't be found, this country is poised to once again erupt in deadly violence. There are very many hardliners around Mr. Kibaki who do not want any kind of power sharing. And unfortunately, if Mr. Kibaki continues to rely on these people, I see only doom for this country.